first of all, obviously Ames is an important mission and all that, but there's also your headquarters here is Huntsville. So how right. does the community work to support AMC's mission? So uh, really it's spectacular. You know, Jeff, I just went and talked to the Chamber of Commerce. It's probably been about a month now. But what I wanted to do is thank them, right? You know, we have 38,000, give or take a person, working on Redstone Arsenal. Uh, and they live in our communities here, the Tennessee Valley community, what, you know, Madison County, Huntsville, and then even beyond. Um, and so the, they're embedded, right? And the support we get uh, on a daily basis from the community is remarkable. Um, and I would tell you that it, it's magnified when we do events like this. Right. Over uh, 5,000 people were registered to come be a part of uh, the conference um, and the show, right? To see industry partners, listen to military leaders speak. Um, and it takes a lot for the community to come together to do that, right? Hotels, restaurants, rental cars, um, uh, even parking becomes a challenge. But the community support to, to allow us to do this is fantastic. Um, and uh, we couldn't do this without the community. So I personally want to say thanks for that. No problem, sir. And with all the work that AMC does, and the whole theme of this week is capabilities. Uh, I'll keep that a second. Yeah, start <laughs> it's okay. over. I had to make sure mine were on silent <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so, fun. so when it comes to the work AMC does, and today's and the theme of this conference was just delivering capabilities for multi domain right. multi-domain battle, how does AMC do that? So we, we do that in a variety of ways, and you know uh, uh, in our relationship I could talk for hours and days and weeks about it. Uh, but we develop and deliver material readiness. Uh, the AMC headquarters that's located on Redstone Arsenal is responsible for synchronizing and integrating the capabilities of nine major subordinate commands, which translates to 60,000 government employees, 60,000 contractors, um, and we are located around the world, currently supporting uh, Iraq, um, uh, Afghanistan, uh, and then exercises in Europe and South Korea, as well as all the American installations uh, that are located in CONUS here. Uh, so uh, we have a pretty uh, important role uh, in executing support for our Army. Small job. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps me busy. Yeah. I have no doubt. So you, I understand you've gotten some time to visit around the world and look at the mission AMC. Right. Does. If there's one thing that stuck out to you through all your through all the travels, what was it? Uh, dedication to our soldiers, right? Uh, the soldiers of Army, or the civilians, really primarily civilians of Army Materiel Command, are so dedicated to providing uh, the best material readiness to the soldier who is forward. Uh, they are 100% focused, and they give everything they have to provide their best, and I'm very proud of that. What message does that send you to that, to, to being able to, willing and able to do that? Well, it makes me very proud, right? Proud to be in our Army, uh, proud to command Army Materiel Command, uh, and proud to know them, right? Just, it's, it's a remarkable feeling. We've heard a lot from everyone here this week about the fact that we're no longer, in the future, not gonna be in a counter, not necessarily a counterinsurgency, counterterrorism world. Right. That's something you have experienced in your service in Iraq, but we're switching more over it seems to a force on force conflict. How is AMC working to make that transition? Yeah, so I, I think uh, if I could rephrase for you a little bit, I, I think what the chief has told us, General Milley, is that we need to be ready to do more than counterterrorism. Uh, and we need to be uh, prepared and ready to do um, decisive action against a near peer competitor. Uh, and that is a, two different spectrums of war, uh, as a logistician would define it. Uh, and it takes different skill sets to be able to do that. Uh, most importantly, it takes our ability to anticipate requirements, right? Because um, a heavy force, tanks and Bradleys, and aircraft on the battlefield require a lot of support. Fuel, ammunition, uh, soldiers need food, um, uh, repair parts, etc. So to do that the best way, it's about anticipation. It's about being trained and ready, uh, standards and discipline, uh, and then getting ahead of, ahead of the decision cycle. And we're doing that through many uh, efforts, whether it's through contracting command located right here in Redstone Arsenal, or through the science and technology community located at Aberdeen Proving Grounds, or through our life cycle management commands that are located at Aberdeen, up in Warren, Michigan, or down here in Redstone. Um, and so we are truly connected to this thought process. One of the sto story I did last night, for example, was about the importance of logistics and sustainment and making sure that 
you can be the best army in the world, but you don't have the you don't have the equipment. Right. You can't do your job. And is that and you've talked a lot about operationalizing. Is, is that part of that being able to do the job by having what's yeah. needed? So our, our my my as I translate that uh, the word operationalize, mm -hmm. that is about making sure that the commander has what he needs before he asks for it, uh, or she, mm -hmm. uh, so that they have freedom of maneuver. We want them to be agile and adaptive against the enemy, and we don't want them constrained or restrained because of logistics support. Um, uh, but as we know, uh, to coin a phrase, an army moves on its stomach, right? And so in order to be ready, or for them to be, have the most um, uh, maneuver capability, then we have to be ahead of their decision cycle. So you, want com you don't want combat, you, combat commanders thinking about where am I going to get my supplies? No. You're thinking about their mission and what, you're, and what AMC worry about. That is our responsibility to make sure that uh, we get them what they need when they need it. Uh, uh, and and um, I, I'm not a very big uh, just-in-time logistician. Uh, I'm more about getting ahead of their decision cycle. So. And getting ahead of that decision cycle is something that leads to things like you and I have talked a lot about APS and everything like that. If you had a choice, if you had a unit that was going to Europe and you had an APS set or you had their equipment at Fort Hood or Fort Bliss or something, which one would you rather have them take? Their own or be ready to assume an APS? Well, it, it would all uh, depend on the scenario, right, and what objectives the president uh, wants us to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, and under different uh, scenarios, there might be different reasons. Uh, first and foremost, uh, frankly, in the current state of what we're doing, I'm an advocate of the units deploying with their equipment from home base, right? So as they go to train in Europe or they go to train in Korea, uh, there's a lot to be uh, learned. Uh, it's all about training. Uh, we are a CONUS-based army. Uh, so the better we get at projecting ourselves from uh, the fort to the port, from the port to the port, and from the port to the foxhole, um, the better we'll be, right? So when we really have to go. So in its current uh, situation, I'm an advocate of letting them take their own equipment. But I am equally responsible for ensuring that the Army pre-position stocks is ready to use at any time, right, to allow the President the flexibility to say, just fly soldiers over and draw the APS and let the APS uh, support the requirement. Which goes back to what you talked about earlier, not having combat or the for just, just not have the commanders who are worrying about the operational needs, not right. even think about right. their supplies. They can, we can get whatever they need. Yes, we are providing, um, uh, we're, my goal is to provide uh, the commander's options, right? And if we can reduce the speed of things because of the way we have things set up, then greater options occur. And when greater options occur, then uh, commanders have a, a better chance of doing their job. So, and sir, so we sure. are in support of that. So. And it's an incredible mission. I mean, you look at it and then you, and then you go, I need to look at that again and just realize how vast right. it is. You showed us a little bit back in December, and it was just a, a snapshot of it. But when it comes, you know, pivoting back to a little bit of the community, I, I, this is an old thing that came from NASA. I've heard is the, the janitor, right. the janitor working to help through the space program. Is that something you see with the people in Huntsville? I see it uh, totally, and it's a great analogy, right? Everybody is a part of the success, uh, and everybody plays a role, some larger than others. Um, but everybody needs to be a part of this uh, 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 mission. Uh, and so the team approach, whether you actually literally walk onto Redstone Arsenal and do something from janitor to uh, senior executive, or you are somebody that just is uh, a church member, right, and, or coaching a baseball team where kids uh, play, uh, it all comes together, right? Our proximity to the battle is not a correlation um, to your output towards that battle, right? And so this entire community, right, is contributing every day. What we're doing in Afghanistan, what we're doing in Iraq, uh, and what we may have to do in the future as called upon. Um, and so I'm very grateful, right? And so, uh, frankly, I, I just appreciate you giving me time to say that uh, because what a powerful community it is here. Uh, and I've never, and I've been doing this for a while, um, and I'm a little bit biased now because I'm the commander here, uh, but, but the, the reach out uh, from the community to us has been remarkable. Uh, and quite frankly, I'm pretty proud of that, and I talk about it quite a bit.
logistics, and it, it goes back to a little bit what you talked about earlier, sir, with logistics and supplies and everything like that. You, as the AMC commander, you shouldn't have to worry. Is my community going to support the people that work? Right. Here? It's something you don't even have to worry. Right, about. And, and that's exactly right. And I don't. I, I feel that uh, the community's embraced us so much uh, that, quite frankly, I'm not even sure they understand if somebody does work on Redstone. They just treat us the same, and they take care of us the same. So. Sir, I think I probably already know the answer to this, but what's a favorite part of your job? Working as AMC commander, the people, the mission? It, it is uh, the soldiers that we support, right? It's, uh, it's a satisfaction that what we do, right, developing, delivering material readiness is, is hopefully helping them do their job better um, uh, and provides them the confidence in the equipment that they have so that they can go face the enemy uh, with the courage that they, that they do every day. So. That's all I have. Thank Jeff, thanks so much. I really appreciate it.